supplying uh, so i will give definition of uh, empirical uh, definition of uh, probability measure like this way so that you have already seen in plus 2 plus 2 you might have seen the definition so the probability of an event happens as it is happens to be a fraction fraction the fractional value that takes between 0 to between 0 to 1 probability happens to be a number between 0 to 1 so that that idea you are having uh, from uh, plus 2 and in the plus 2 you had already seen the definition of probability of an event how it is number of way outcome e occurs number of way outcome e or event e occurs that or another way also you can say that uh, how many outcome you observe in uh, event e how many outcomes are there? so if you talk about outcome what is it if you are trying to quantify a probability so you are going through basic concept of probability so if you are performing a random experiment or random phenomena then uh, what is the elementary thing uh, through which you can quantify the randomness what is the elementary thing if you are experimenting a random phenomena what is the uh, elementary thing what is the starting that means if you are tossing a coin what is the starting thing you will have if you are tossing a performing a, a toss of coin what what is the thing that you you will say what is the outcome outcome is the a starting thing if you try to uh, go in a systematic what is the approach that you have to ask if you are performing an experiment that means random experiment random is hidden here whenever in this course i talk about experiment it happens to be random experiment. so when we are performing a random experiment what what is the starting thing we look for outcome what is the outcome if you are performing if you are uh, tossing a coin either you will say outcome would be either head or tail so outcome is the elementary the first thing what you first random experiment you are going to perform random experiment so outcome is the first thing once you are having outcome then you will talk about what is the probability of that outcome what is the probability of that outcome that is the way to compute probability so i had already told that uh, uh, how to compute probability of an outcome that in last class i had already told that but don't apply this definition it is coming in this form of this definition in the finite probability it is coming in that definition directly don't apply you should answer that how it is coming how it is coming and you should know what is this this you should know what is this but don't if you are someone is asking what is probability don't give this definition what is probability so probability we compute it through probability measure we define probability measure that probability measure is taking value between 0 to 1 and satisfy three law three law that i will talk about so first law happens to be it is based on probability law it is coming probability law like what probability law you are putting uniform law that in a layman way we call, we are calling it equally likely non uniform law other kind of things other so that so that i will talk about the top approach so this this also you should know that this this is you should know uh, for finite probability this is the valid uh, definition of uh, computing probability so we say that uh, how many outcome we observe in event e? outcome is the elementary thing like if you go in charge what is the elementary charge e e uh, yeah. uh, likewise if you go in energy what is the uh, elementary energy everything is quantized in nature now h, h nu have you heard h nu planks max planks what i am given so that elementary thing you should know like if you are coming in probability probabilistic phenomena or random phenomena what is the elementary thing outcome is the elementary thing so from outcome you try to uh, design for the event try to design sample of so, so outcome is related with infinitely to some experiment so if you perform an experiment you will get one outcome you perform again that experiment you will get another outcome likewise so with each performance of the experiment you are getting an outcome each performance each trial trial also we are calling it trial so outcome so probability of uh, event happens to be we have to look inside the event how many outcomes you observe if you are willing to compute probability of an event e then we have to look how many uh, outcomes are there in that event that is coming from the corresponding experiment so that we call it calling it number of outcome in the event a divided by 
divided by all possible outcomes with respect to that experiment it is not like that another experiment with respect to that first take experiment that one is the starting one and look for outcome element first element so that is the, this is the understanding of this formula but it is having problem one problem is coming like this way suppose you flip two coins you flip two coins and you are having a question that you have been asked a question that uh, uh, what is the probability of getting one head and one tail this is the question you have to compute the probability of one head and one tail okay one by one by four one by two one by four various answer i am getting okay so actually two two great mathematician having two different approaches two great mathematician one is kolmogorov approach first approach we are calling it kolmogorov this is the kolmogorov approach solution one is given by kolmogorov that we call it modern understanding so kolmogorov what kolmogorov did he come up with all possible outcome so if you are uh, performing uh, two flip of uh, coins what are the possible outcome head 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 tail tail head tail tail so the, this is the column of vectors that uh, name of that one is we, we are calling sample space and what is the target thing what is the event event that we are looking for one head and one tail that is event so if you zoom out the event p what you will observe within e if you perform the experiment then if you perform the experiment these are the possible outcome that you have result now focus on your problem here problem you have to compute the probability of one head and a word tail so that is that so this we call it sample space so the event in event if you try to look in event what are the outcome in event one head and one tail so order is not present there so head head tail or tail so there are two outcomes if you try to look into okay so if you are going to compute probability of p what will be probability of head tail plus probability of tail head that means what is probability of head tail here all are equally like it all are equally like it so each one is having probability 1 by 4 how it is coming i will explain that so it is modern approach i am not uh, counting things the number of element in there i am not counting that I am saying that probability of this one is 1 by 4. Probability of this one is 1 by 4. Total probability is some 1 by 2. It is 1 by 2. So how uh, how we came to know probability of head tail and tail head both are 1 by 4? We came up from the probability law, uniform law. Uniform law say that if you are starting situation, if you don't know any Jack probability law, the starting law is present to be uniform law. We are putting uniform law here. That says that probability of tail head equal to probability of head tail equal to probability of head head equal to probability of tail tail. This, this, this one is uniform law. Uniform law is saying that each outcome is having equal probability. You like it, uniform law. What is the second? Is we know that if sum of probability of all outcome, it would be equal to one. That means we are saying exhausting it. Another way we are saying normalizing. So probability of all possible outcome. That means we are including all possible outcome. That means somebody is saying that you will be if I toss and a or a will toss. Then what is the probability of uh, winning that person? It's only one. That person is going to win either head to come or tail. What is it? There is no loop. So all uh, that was winning here is associated with all possible outcomes. So it is certain thing. So that's way. 
So protein of certain thing always happens to be one. Protein of all in short time, protein all possible outcomes if we say that is always one. In an experiment, well, probability of all possible outcomes is always. So it is always by default. Thing. This condition is by default. Thing. Apply these two, apply these two, and you will get solution. One by four, one by four. From here you are getting one by four. This one by four you are not getting because of that definition. You are not getting because of that definition. So in solution one approach we are applying this modern approach. What this we call it Kolmogorov approach, and we are getting this probability. Now we will go for second approach, D. Lamberti approach. There is a there is one more approach, D. Lambert approach. What D. Lambert do? It is focusing on uh, head and tail kind of thing. So it is uh, and noting down outcome like this way. Two heads, one heads and one tail, two tails. Outcome here, De Lambert is collecting outcome like this way. Two heads, so if you are performing uh, a coin twice, tossing a coin twice, then what are the possible outcome according to Dale Lambert? It is taking like this way. That uh, saying two heads, order is not matter. Two tails, one head and one tail. So if you are noting down in that perspective, then what is the probability from that formula? One by three. So totally. So that one by three you are getting and the last formula, empirical formula, what I had given, because of that you are getting. So that one is the wrong approach. So if you want to see something more about this one, you can Google, you will get this. Why that assumption has been taken in that way. So empirical is really not right approach to proceed with the definition of probability. So simply, uh, I would like to say that if you are uh, trying to understand probability, then basic principle of probability are little more than common sense little more than common sense one you are using common sense okay with common sense uh, Lambert, D. Lambert has given answer one by three apart from common sense what you have to apply you have to apply law certain law certain number of laws in order to concrete your common sense so there is a common sense plus something that one is coming from property law so the success of Kolmogorov theory is due to the fact that it genuinely captures our real world observation about randomness. So that's why now this day, every, if somebody thinks that what is the modern definition of probability, it is given by Kolmogorov. So I will give that definition here. So here we are comfortable with basic framework of probability theory. We will start developing increasing sophisticated model of random phenomena. So if you are very much comfortable with uh, this Kolmogorov approach, then we will proceed to model random phenomena. So that we will call it probabilistic modeling. So we will start with modeling. So it may be simple, it may be difficult. Later, as we proceed in this course, uh, difficulty level will increase. But everything uh, you can understand. Uh, there is a very good um, concept behind everything. Very good, good approach behind everything. Okay. So now I'm just uh, avoiding all this. I'm coming directly to basic principle of uh, probability. What are the basic principles? So you know that uh, I mentioned that uh, elementary thing is outcome. You have to focus on outcome. What is the outcome? That is that. Based on outcome, you are going to define basic principles. What are those? First would be sample space. First would be sample space. You have to collect all possible outcome and at the end what you are getting that we are calling it sample space. So everyone know definition of sample space. So what is sample space simply you will say collection of all possible outcome of n random experiment. You have to list out all the outcome then you will get sample space. So you need to know random space once perform random experiment then collect sample space. So random experiment it is an experiment simply if I ask from the definition perspective what is random experiment whose outcome we can't predict. It is an experiment whose outcome we can't predict. Okay, that, in, that one is the random experiment. If uh, you can raise a question, uh, can you counter my definition that random experiment that uh, it is an experiment whose outcome we can't predict? 
each time if you perform an experiment random experiment you can't say what outcome will come can you say anyone in prior can you say that if i am tossing a coin can you say that the head will come or tail will come uh, head or tail getting head or tail that, that, that those are possible outcome we are listing out all possibilities but we can't say that in prior that head will come or tail will come so those are random experiments whose uh, outcome we can't predict in prior so same example i have given in head or tail so i have defined here uh, random experiment and now if you talk about uh, basic concept that happens to be first ingredient of uh, uh, among the basic concept first ingredient it would be sample space that's what is the sample space we are talking about collection of all possible outcome of an random experiment this is the sample space generally we denote it by omega capital omega or you can denote it by s yes, depends upon situation but you need to know don't worry about notation just worry about what is the sample space what are things there so it is very important to understand what is sample space and how to uh, talk about how to come up with sample space so if you are having a random experiment list out all the possibilities all the possible outcome so example i have given taken here so consider the random experiment of throwing one red dice and one blue dice what would be outcome here if you are throwing one red dice and one blue dice so identify the outcome first then you will be able to identify the sample space what is the outcome? if you are uh, uh, throwing two dice one is red dice another one is blue dice okay so what would be outcome here? how we denote outcome here? yes so what is the number? That is order of the um, order of the order of the I comma J. I for red for red text and J is for so that outcome is here order of the I G. I am saying that what is the outcome? See the form of outcome. Then you will be able to note down sample of space. So that, that is the problem. I define the outcome. It is very simple example. So tossing a point and crossing the point that means also very simple example. You can identify the outcome. X or K, if you do not outcome by H and K, what is the truth? How you do not outcome? That is not practical there. So these are simple, they are complicated problems. So you need to know ID, 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 first identification process of outcome. How to identify outcome? First try to see, zoom it the problem, zoom the problem, experiment, zoom the experiment and see what is the outcome and later collect all the possible outcome. So outcome happens to be, here it is an order pair. First entry is coming from red dice, second entry is coming from blue dice. And then see the variation. So here see that how, what is the outcome? I, so you can say that uh, I will give a step. First step is identification of outcomes. So identification of outcome. So identify the outcome. Identification of outcome. In short, I will have identification of outcome. Okay, I did. Now, after that, see the variation of outcome. How oh, value of outcome? First entry, it varies from 1 to C in integral way, integral number. And second entry varies from 1 to C in integral way. So, we have pointed out all the outcome. Then, easily you can write what is the sample of space. Now you are writing something. You are listing all the outcomes. Also, you need to know a pattern through which you can list all the outcomes. So, what is the best way to list out the outcome? What is the best way to list out the outcome? Hmm? What is the best effort to fill this sample space here? Fixing one thing. Fixing one thing. What does it mean? One product is with other So it is a horizontal move or vertical move? Horizontal. Everyone in mathematics, if you are writing something, everything is having meaning. I am writing I, I am writing J. If you in matrices, you might have seen already. We matrix we denote it in general form uh, T I J M by N. What is I? What is J? I is talking about 
for the growth and they come for the organisms. So you need to that notation it will never change. It is never so see the meaning of that. So that's why mathematician they are very much logical person uh, they come up with this. So what would be how you will write this of all those? So once we are fixing this one, if you are you are uh, saying that I am fixing one, that means what? What you are fixing? You are fixing row. I equal to one, of number first row. I equal to two, of number second row. I equal to three. That means so since, yeah. So if if you are fixing first row, then that means as a one, then that means you are talking about first row. Now you are fixing second row. That means you are fixing. You are talking about second row. So that's why I call that understand thing in a very proper way and understand meaning of everything. I means row, J means column. There is variation of row, J means variation of columns. If J, if you vary J. It will vary. Likewise, what will be the last entry? I am just writing the last entry. So this is the sample space. How many samples? Now you will count. How many? Now this is the final state. How many outcomes are there? So how you can compute that? Which which uh, which which concept is giving power to compute the total? No. No. When I am we are saying. Which concept is given here? Capacity of counting outcomes. Counting, the counting, principle of counting. Principle of counting is given. So that combination, uh, permutation, combination, those things are given. So here, here, have you order? Order is there. That means, in complete, what? This, how many options for this box? Six. How many are options for this box? This one is. This counting is a physical counting. Repetition is and order. Order is matter of number. Yeah, to do that. So, also you should know how these things are coming. So we got the sample space. So this is the process of sample space. First, identify the outcome. You are, if you are able to identify the outcome, you can able to write the sample space. It, I am taking another example. Suppose consider the random experiment of waiting for a bus that will arrive at a random time in the future. Suppose you are in bus stop, uh, bus stop, somewhere bus stop. Uh, this just get near to gate of this. Uh, College. Suppose bus, buses are running in this uh, uh, road. So if you are uh, going to wait, uh, going to take any uh, any bus, so definitely waiting time it would be a random phenomenon. Waiting time would be like, it, it will be totally random in nature. So you have to identify what is the out, uh, outcome here. What is the outcome? Don't know. What is the outcome if, for this problem? What is the outcome? Experiment is waiting for a bus that will arrive at random, at random, at a random time. So, what is the outcome here? Uh, what? Uh, some point. Uh, here, outcome is value of time. At which bus is arriving? T equal to zero. What is meaning of that? Bus is when you are going to that bus stop. Bus is coming instantly. Once you reach that uh, uh, bus stop, bus just came at the same point instantly. So that we are saying T equal to zero. At T equal to zero, bus came instantly. So T equal to zero is the outcome. If someone is saying that t equal to 10, you can use unit smartly, minute or hour depends upon situation. So definitely time is having unit. So t equal to 10, what does it mean? Yeah, after 10 minutes. After 10 minutes. So t 
t equal to 10 is one outcome, t equal to zero is one outcome, t equal to 1.5 is one outcome, t equal to 1.999 is one outcome. So how outcome is taking value here? What are the outcome? How many outcome you observe here? Uncountable, uncountable. So t here, the waiting time, it is taking value from zero to up to infinity. So what is here, outcome here in second? Second, so t is taking value between 0 to infinity. t is taking value from 0. t equal to 0 is 1 outcome, t equal to 1 is like 1 outcome. So identify the outcome. Once you are able to uh, identify the outcome, identification of outcome is done. Next is at the sample space. What is sample space here? What is sample space? Selection of what is sample the interval 0 to infinity including k. Simple here for the second problem, outcome is, uh, sorry, sample space is, mm, it is written 0 to infinity, interval 0 to infinity, including 0 as well. So that is the process of identification of outcome, then you will be able to write sample space. Now, next example I will take, flight of bumblebee. Everyone might be aware of bumblebee. What about the animated movie? Okay. I am not talking about that one, that one is main made artificial. Uh, bumblebee, this one is uh, uh, made by nature, natural, God, God made, we say that. If there is an artificial, you can control that, you can control that, okay. But uh, nature made thing, you can't control. You can destroy, but can't control. So, if you are taking flight of a bumblebee, what is the... Uh, here, this one uh, experiment is flight of a bumblebee. What is flight means? Uh, movement. Okay. So how bumblebee moves? What is the outcome here? Identify the outcome. What is the outcome? You all have taken calculus. Then there was there might be another course. Also calculus was there in. Uh, plus 2 as well. So, apply, think about that calculus and try to answer what would be outcome? Area. Area is something else and path is something else. So, what is outcome? Point. You can count all those points. So, can you simply see rightly pointed there the one thing, path. Path is the outcome. If you observe the bumblebee, then the flight of bumblebee, it is a path. Bumblebee moves randomly. It is a random movement. If you observe the movement of bumblebee, it is purely random. It is random in nature. So random experiment is just flight of bumblebee. And uh, what is the outcome here? It is a path. So that one is a geometrical. What is the mathematical form of path? What is the mathematical form of path? Because in mathematics, you need to know what is the mathematical picture of that so that you can operate things, you can quantify things. So that is the identification. When we say the identification of anything, identification of outcome, identify in the term of mathematical object so that you can apply mathematical operation there. Like here, time was the outcome. So here you can apply addition, multiplication, whatever you want to do, mathematical operation you do. Here it is order pair in the first person. So whatever things related with this order pair, you can do that. Okay. So likewise in third question, uh, what is the mathematical form of path? Any idea? What is the mathematical form of path? What? No. Path is not an integral. Length, you are able to compute length of the path with the help of integral coordinate system coordinate, system. coordinate is the framework uh, through which systematically you are trying to uh, study that path systematic approach it is a systematic approach it is giving a framework to uh, study that how we denote path x y x y is coordinate be very exact in mathematics path is a continuous function of time it is a continuous so path just trace out. So this passing bumblebee it will trace like this way. So what is this one? Either you can call it curve or path. 
path. But if you there are ways, if you want to denote the uh, mathematical object as a mathematical object, you will say that it is a function. So it would be some function of time. With respect to time, the bumblebee is taking a path. So it is a continuous function. So what is the outcome here? It is a continuous function with interval 0 to infinity depends upon or 0. Uh, if you are observing for 5 seconds, then your interval would be, it is a map from 0 to 5, continuous map defined over 0 to 5, continuous map. It is a continuous, simply we, you say that it is continuous map. So a bee is buzzing around and we track its flight trajectory for 5 seconds. If you are observing for 5 seconds, then I will ask what are the possible outcomes. Then, and the uh, flight of a path uh, that B, it would be something like, okay. Uh, and during any animation, I made a mistake. So here, this is the path of, one path of, yeah. one path of bubble. So what is that? Simply, you are observing the five. One, there will be several paths. So it is a, path is a continuous one. Do you observe any discontinuity here? Continuous. What is next? What do you observe? It is not defensible. Is it defensible? So path of a bumblebee, it is not like that it is defensible. It is, there, there are several keys. So simply you say, right now say that it is a continuous, continuous path. Then what do we sample a space? Collect all the path. Collect all the path, path of the bumblebee. All sample a space is collection of all possible outcomes. So that means it is sample a space for this problem is collection of all continuous functions defined over the interval 0 to 5. 0 to 5, 5 is unit of that is second. So this is the collection of all continuous math from interval 0 to 5 in R3. We observe path of, uh, we observe 3D path, 3D path. So here yeah, B is moving in 3D space. It is not like B will move in plane only or in there is a linear motion like that. It is a, it is a 3D. So this one is 3D curve, 3D path. So if you are taking 3D curve, how many components you observe? How you observe curve or path? You observe like this. If you are writing this X, Y, Z, it is talking about coordinate. But if you say that these coordinates are coming through, yes, Mapping, time mapping, they are talking about one curve, then this should be one concept. Like if you write a sin t, a cosine t, sin t, in a planar curve, take planar curve, take x t equal to cosine t and y t equal to sin t. It is a curve. What is the graph of this curve? Can you plot the graph of this curve? It is a curve. So, if you have t between 0 to 5 or 4 to 5, whatever you do, you will have t on the middle in that side. So, path of this, so it is, it is equation of the, equation of the curve, circular curve, equation of the circular curve. So, if you uh, do third, like if you take, uh, what is the equation of the solid net? Solid net. Hmm. One z axis would be there. Z equal to z. Z will be there in linear and x and y will be t cos t and t sin t. J that means z equal to t. Z equal to t. So how you get uh, solid net? Take a spring and stretch it. A stretch it. A stretch is you will get solid net like that. A stretch is take a spring and uh, just from both end try to pull it. What are you doing? Slack press. Slack press. Just go out. You are making just go out. If you are in class, be in directly. It may look very easy. Everyone, whatever I am trying to talk about, very simple. I am not talking very complicated. So I am talking from the perspective that you will develop. I am going to understand. Different concept in the simple. Same if you are developing this uh, approach, so every problem, every problem will be easy. So it is all about the uh, you will need to know what you have from where you have to start and what you want to get, what, what you want to do. So that is that is the technique. It is 
coming through practice it is not like that someone will make you under, uh, understand instantly you, if you do uh, practice from your side then you will understand then you so you all try in that framework in order to come up with all these uh, in order to solve complicated problems so identify ask questions that's where nowhere in any book you will get the term that identification of outcome go and search it out nowhere you will get a identification outcome you develop the idea of identification outcome how you you have to identify now what is the next ingredient next basic concept events once you have the idea of sample space outcome will come everywhere that is the uh, what we elementary thing that is the starting thing outcome will come, come everywhere once you are able to identify outcome then you will be able to write sample now event is something is uh, in short uh, you can say that in plus two event is happen to be subset of sample space uh, that one is very uh, what we call uh, rubbish definition uh, but uh, if you want want to event it has to be very specific you know if you are if you are trying to be a specify yourself then you are getting event so once we have defined all possible outcome experiment we should discuss what type of question we can ask about such outcomes so who is leading to event the question is leading to event what question you want to ask from that experiment that question is leading to event so that is so how you identify uh, uh, events find out what question is there that question is giving idea to identify the uh, event question is giving idea to identify the event. identification of outcome was different approach once you are able to identify outcome you will be able to write sample space once you are having sample space then within sample space how you can look various event the question is giving idea look into question what question is asking and that question will lead to a event so that is the so it is this approach we are calling it identification of event so this uh, uh, simply when the question there is a specification of things simply i i would like to say so this uh, leads to notion of events informally an event is an statement for which we can determine whether it is true or false after the experiment has been performed whether it is true or false so it is event happens to be uh, so another mathematical uh, you can say that right now it, it may look like jargon so one statement would be there question how you ask question do you know in english uh, everyone already have gone through professional communication no? also in, in school during school you might have already gone through question is an statement or not question is an statement or not mike true or false question is you have to say whether it is true or so every question uh, may or may not be a statement and so a statement what is the criteria of being a statement yeah it must have binary decision binary meaning either true or false so that is the so every mathematical theorem if you are taking whether it is a, a statement or something else a statement if a, if you are taking a mathematical statement and you come to know uh, if someone is saying that it is a mathematical uh, a statement but you are getting counter example that means you are getting one example which is con uh, countering or contradicting the statement so that a statement would be no more that that sentence would be no more a statement i should not say a statement uh, that sentence would be not a statement it would be conjecture have you heard conjecture word like someone is saying that uh, a square of real number is positive is it a statement or not no what is the square of zero there is a counter example if you do a squaring of zero then that would be zero zero is not a positive number so that's where if you but if you say that a square of real number is non negative non negative means greater than equal to zero it is a statement so that you have to identify it there should be no counter example then it would be a statement okay 
So identify that event through a statement. So here, same question I am taking, uh, same example. Consider the random experiment of throwing one red dice and one blue dice. Okay. Uh, so we we know that we did not outcome by ij order pair ij i comma j we did not by ij okay i for when red come up j for when blue come up. now consider the event we are uh, having various event uh, the sum of number on the dice is seven the sum of number on the dice is seven what is this one the sum of number on the dice is 7. Is it a statement or something else? Yes. It is a statement. It is having only two binary values. Either it will be 0 or 1. So that's why it is a statement. So that's why it is defining a event. Within the sample space, it is defining an event. Now, this events occur in uh, this event occurs in given experiment if and only the outcome of the experiment happened to lie in the following sub subset of all possible among the all possible outcome so what is the event just single out what are the outcomes try to go inside the event through the uh, using that statement using that statement go inside that so what uh, what outcome you will observe in the event what outcome you will observe sample subspace is also having event uh, sorry outcome it is containing all the possible outcomes event is also having outcome but it is coming with some a specification that a specification is based on question or a statement it is based on a statement so a statement is sum of the number uh, number on the dice is seven so what outcome will come inside the event in this event one six two five three four four three five two six one this is it so you you can see within the sample space we we are developing we are creating event so as much as a statement you will put inside the sample space with respect to that experiment you will get those uh, various uh, events what are the total possible number of out, uh, uh, events in this uh, experiment you know that to the power n to the total number of possible subsets if you are having a set of uh, uh, size n the how many subset you to the power n so you know that proof is also based on combination combinatory combinatory is called now another example i will take it here so here we cannot predict in advance whether this event will occur so if you are having an event then this event is not a certain kind of thing through that statement we come up with event so in prior we can't say that uh, this event will ha happen we can't say that we can't we can't say that so uh, but we can determine whether it has occurred once the outcome of the experiment is known but we can determine it has occurred one outcome is known to us outcome is that means we can know about event but if you talk about prediction of that event whether this event will happen or not to this uh, number of uh, trial of experiment whether this event will happen or not then that we can't predict it is having a probability that protein measure so I, I haven't come in so that protein measure will come later so this one is the second important uh, basic concept of probability uh, is event first is sample space we discussed second is event now an another example we are taking waiting time same uh, waiting time example waiting time for bus so consider the random experiment of waiting for a bus that will arrive at a random time in the future random time in the future so how through some sentence we will introduce uh, here event so what sentence we are uh, taking here the bus comes within first hour the bus comes within first hour is it a statement or not the come the bus come within first hour either bus will come or not come in first hour two binary uh, situation is there so it is a statement this a statement help to define one event so what is the event here in this uh, uh, waiting time for bus what is the event uh, under this uh, statement under the umbrella of this uh, statement what is, what is the event? 0 to 1 uh, so unit depends upon your choice what you to want to okay so it is 0 to 1 do we have time? 
so so this class will go up to 12 15 do you need break you need you don't need break for few minutes because it is uh, one minute no, one hour 30 minute class five minute break up. okay now we will go forward to discuss about probability measure if time permit then we will discuss about probability measure so probability measure we have already discussed about uh, two important concept one sample space another event now once we are having event we will try to compute probability of that occurrence of that event probability of occurrence that event that so how we can compute that we can compute that in that through probability measure probability measure it is a quantity that uh, uh, roughly we are saying that probability of that event uh, rough formula empirical formula i had given but how it is coming so i commentary over that so now coming to exact definition of probability measure how we define so to model a random experiment we have to specify for each event a our degree of confidence that degree of confidence we are calling probability of measure whether this event will occur by assigning a number p of a which is observing value between 0 to 1 and this p of a we will call it probability measure if it satisfy this law this this p of a it satisfy few laws first probability of a that p of a right now call it p of a if p of a is 1 then we are certain that event a will occur in this case a will happens every time we perform the experiment if we perform the experiment what outcome is we are uh, getting it will be included it will satisfy the statement through which a is made if you perform an experiment and what outcome you will get it will satisfy that experiment sorry that statement that means omega belongs to a every time it is meaning of p of a equal to 1 that means a is a very certain event very certain event. it is certain event now if probability of a equal to 0 that means we are certain that event a will not occurs we are certain that event a will not occurs that that in this case again certainty is coming a never happens in negative a never happens in any of the trial of the experiment trial or uh, perform, performance of that experiment any trial of it so that uh, so uh, you are clear with 0 and 1 that happens to be bound of uh, uh, that assignment number name is this one is probability measure so you you know you are very much clear with 0 and 1 what about between 0 and 1 so if probability of um, probability measure a p of a equal to 0.7 0.7 we say that even will occur in some realization of the experiment and not occurs in other case that is 70% chance is there event a will occur 30% chance is that event a will not occur so if you are taking an event with respect to that event we can associate an assignment number p of a regarding that assignment number we can say all these things we can say all these things okay so if you summarize all these things in together is a, as a rule the rule will come like this that we are calling probability law so intuitively this specify the likelihood of an event likelihood of an event or likelihood of an outcome or uh, any set of possible outcome now what is the difference between uh, event and so uh, and uh, sample space can you in, in the definition can you uh, differ these two in uh, in the very similar framework we, we discussed that sample space happens to be set of all possible outcomes set of all possible outcome and what is event if you are willing to write event in the same uh, way what would be event event is the set of some possible outcomes Sample space is set of all possible outcome 
an event is set of some possible output. Difference between these two, what? In sample space, all is coming. In event, some is coming. That is the case. So that. So a probability measure, it is an assignment number p of a to every event a such that it satisfies the following rules. First, the assignment number it is taking value between 0 to 1 and this assignment number is having another name we call it degree of confidence degree of confidence okay second if you if event is including every possible outcome then for that assignment number will take value one it is talking about certainty of that uh, event if assignment number is equal to 1, so from the previous explanation, it is equal to 1. So this also we call it normalization condition. So second rule is normalization rule. Second normal, under this uh, uh, assignment number, second one is normalization law, what we call it. Uh, that P, uh, assignment number associated with all possible outcome is equal to 1. Property of simple space you can call it. And if you are taking any two event, A and B, and both happens to be disjoint, then what is the probability of A union B? It is just sum of probability of uh, corresponding probability. Sum of probability. These are three uh, important law uh, or rule which is satisfied by P of A. You may say that these are very simple. It looks very simple. What is uh, uh, how it is applicable to compute? Uh, probability of an event. I will give idea. You can generalize third law for any uh, n number of disjoint event. You can generalize it. So I am not directly want to go to example. Probabilistic modeling. See the picture again. This picture again. And based on that, uh, I will try to compute assignment number. So see the picture. Whatever things I discussed till now, it cover everything. I have started with random experiment, then I look for outcome, I look, I, I, I define outcome, so if you are taking all possible outcome, you are getting sample space, if you are taking some possible outcome, you are getting event, and under the umbrella of protein major, assignment number, you are assigning number, probability of A, one number between 0 to 1, between 0 to 1. If A is event A, then it is taking a number between 0 to 1. If B is an event, then P of B, it is taking uh, a number between 0 to 1. Now, one example. And in the next class, I will solve this in step wise. Experiment is first identify experiment. Experiment is first two points. First two points. This is the experiment. And a statement I am using like this case. Getting one. Hidden one P. One P. Okay. So what is first step? Identify the outcome. What would be outcome here? What would be outcome? It would be in order pair, like something, something. Order pair like this, like no order pair. So outcome is coming like uh, head 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 tail or tail head like this. So all this. So once we are able to identify outcome, directly I am going to write uh, sample space. 
just identify the source of arrived sample space. Second, under this statement, identify event. What is event? So, in this event, uh, what are the outcome are coming in this event? It is what? It is some possible outcome. It is some possible outcome. That means that outcome is having one head and one tail. Some possible outcome. So, what are you see here? Now, third component is coming from the main. That definitely we know that probability of this one, it will, if you are willing to compute, it will take value between 0 to 1. 0 to 1. Till now, I discussed about probability measure. Only three basic concepts I discussed. I have not discussed what is the value of P. So, we will take value of P under such a once you introduce protein law, we will get protein So, in that class, we will discuss about protein law. First, you are having understanding of three basic concepts of protein law. These three are basic concepts. What is the name of this one? Sample space, SS, this one is event, and this one is protein measure. These three are the basic concepts. And in that class, we will come up with Probability and in order to know probability measure, it satisfies three properties. It is satisfying three properties. You know that. What are those three properties? Either value of this one will be zero or one or between zero. <laughs> if it is value of this one is equal to one, we say that we include all the possible outcomes. If value of this one is zero, it means he is not including any of the outcomes. Okay, if value is between 0 to 1, that means it includes some of some of But right now it is clear, it is already given. Here. So it satisfies that this one is taking value between 0 to 1. It is not 0, it is not 1, but it is between 0 to 1. It is same. So this this one is this statement is same time. But how to compute? So in next class we will compute. Okay, and we will start uh, solving few problems in next class. Any question? Willing to?